Hey, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. Have you ever tried mixing materials together to create new results? Well, I was experimenting one day and I took some Wendy Vecchi embossing paste and I decided, well, what would happen if I mixed it with some Distress Inks? And not in the same way of coloring the paste before applying it to your paper, but after I've already applied the paste. It was such a crazy idea and I thought, oh, you know what? I want to try it and see what happens. So I took some Distress Inks, uh, the refills. So I have some cracked pistachio here and picked raspberry. These were two of the colors that I used in my project. I ended up putting the paste onto my paper here with a stencil from Simon's Stamp. And after I applied the paste down onto the paper, I then took some Distress Ink refills and dropped them all over this paper. Spritzed it with water and the result turned out so cool as you can see here. This is such a fun, fun card to make and I'm going to show you how I did it. So in this video, we're going to touch on how I used that embossing paste to create that really cool effect with the Distress Inks. And I'll also show you how I finished off the card to create a really neat and fun friendship card, which also coincides with International Friendship Day. So I'll have details on International Friendship Day over at the Simon Says Stamp blog. So you make sure you check the links down in the video description below to find more about that. So let's get started and jump right into creating this card and get started. All right, so I've got this really cool lace stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm attaching this down onto my paper. This is some watercolor paper. I want something that's a little bit more sturdier than cardstock. I'm attaching that down with the painter's tape so it stays in place, and I'm going to start spreading the Wendy Vecchi embossing paste onto my stencil. Embossing paste has a thick consistency to it, very much like the Tim Holtz and Ranger texture paste. I really like using the white embossing paste, but I also will use the texture paste too. This technique, because the pastes are so similar, would work with both the texture paste or this Wendy Vecchi embossing paste. I've not tried other embossing paste with it, so I can't say for sure it would work on all embossing paste. So I would encourage you to experiment and see what happens, just like I did with this card. I was experimenting and seeing what would happen when I blended these two materials together. After you're done using embossing paste and spreading it onto your stencils, you want to make sure that you clean your tools and your stencils really well because the paste will dry on them. Here's where the fun part came in. I took some Distress Ink refills and I started dropping color onto different areas of my paper. Now the stencil is still applied onto the cardstock. I've not removed that yet. I've not removed anything off of this paper. I just applied the paste and then went right into putting the refills onto the embossing paste. Now I'm spritzing this like crazy with water, getting that color to really move. You could do the same technique by using color sprays, but I wanted to see what would happen if I used refills and spritzed them with water. So you're seeing that the colors aren't blending a whole lot yet. That's going to change because I'm going to allow those colors to blend by smoothing them across with my palette knife. And I'm wiping in between each color because I don't want to contaminate other colors that aren't going to blend right. So here I'm mixing some of that blue and cracked pistachio together. It's creating a really nice green and then I'll start working up towards the top. Now this looks like a terrible hot mess and the colors are bleeding outside the embossing paste. But stay with me, it's going to look really cool. I want to let this sit a minute before I take everything off but I don't want to let it completely dry as is because we still have the stencil underneath and I don't want the stencil to dry in the paste itself. So I'm kind of wiping up some of the excess that's hanging off along the edges here. And I do recommend having some sort of work surface underneath of this so that way you're not messing up your desk. Now this is where you need to be really, really careful. We have a lot of wet material on top of the stencil so you don't want to flick it or otherwise you'll have that color and stencil kind of fly all over the place and you'll have a mess. I'm just very carefully making sure I lift this up off of my paper and as I do, you'll see this amazing result that's left on our cardstock. It is so cool. Now, there was some color bleeding because we used so much liquid materials, but I actually like the look. I think it adds to the distress kind of feel and makes it look a lot more interesting. Now, you want to go ahead and get this stencil cleaned off really, really well because that paste and the color will dry on that stencil if you don't clean it off. So this is what the paper looked like before it dried. You can see it's very wet. This is what it looked like after it dried. And I can't tell you how excited I was to see this come to life. I was so thrilled that this crazy idea actually ended up working. 
So I'm going to turn this into a card by trimming it down. I'm using my tonic trimmer here. I really like using this for thicker pieces like this here. I would not suggest running this through a die cutting machine because I don't want to smush the embossing paste. I don't think it would have flattened, but I didn't want to take that chance. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this down onto some dark colored navy blue cardstock. That's just going to help matte the piece and make the color stand out really nicely. I want to pop this up, but instead of using dimensional tape or fun foam, I decided to stack a few pieces of white cardstock behind my panel here, and that will give it a little bit of relief off of my card, plus also make the whole panel a little bit more sturdy because this did warp a little bit from just having so much water and material on top of it. Again, you want to make sure you use a thicker paper like watercolor paper. For this, I used the Canson XL paper. So now I'm bringing in a friend sentiments die from Simon's Stamp, and I'm layering five of them together that I made from white cardstock to create a more dimensional sentiment. After I've layered all of these together, that's going to allow me to take my embossing ink and smush this on top of the sentiment. You don't have to do this step, but I wanted to give this an embossed finish because it's going to give it a little bit more dimension and it's also going to give it a nice glittery finish because I'm using some tonic shimmering embossing powder. So I smush that embossing ink on top of my friend die and I'm going to dunk this into my little container of embossing powder. This shimmering pearl embossing powder I really, really like. It's so pretty and has a beautiful finish when it's heat set. I'm using my tweezers to help hold it in place as I'm going ahead and adding some heat onto this and drying the embossing powder. You can see as it dries, it gets a much more shinier and glittery finish. I really find that using the tweezers are helpful when you're doing embossing on top of a die cut like this where the embossing powder covers the entire piece. So there's that finish. You can see it has a beautiful glittery tone to it. I need a supporting sentiment. So I'm using one from Altenew that says, I love you and I'm here for you. So the sentiment I'm stamping in some embossing ink, and I'm going to stamp it onto some red cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. This is the lipstick red color. Once I stamped that down, I heat embossed it with some white embossing powder and then trimmed it down into a small banner. To make the banner stand out off of my card a little bit more, I'm using a zig marker and just kind of brushing that along the edges. And while that seems like such a small detail, it really does make a big difference and lets the sentiment strip stand off of our background beautifully. So I'll pop that up with some foam tape and then my last finishing touch was to take one of these beautiful shaped sprinkles from Doodlebug in a purple color and add that right on top of the little eye in my word friend. Here's the card. I think this is such a fun card and I want to show you the relief here that you get by using the embossing paste to create this really cool effect where by mixing the Distress Ink refills and the embossing paste together, you create this totally amazing result that I think you will really enjoy trying out as well. Test it out with different color sprays or ink refills and see what kind of fun results you can achieve by using embossing paste and ink and making some really fun backgrounds. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more inspiration. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye!